we're gonna dance the opening. Interpretive. What do you got? Yes! <laughs> He's in. You made the team. Okay. All, All right. right. Welcome to Servings Kitchen with a Cause. We're getting started right this morning. Introduce yourself. Well, I'm Kevin Livingston with UGA Extension, hit located here in Douglas County. I serve as the Ag and Natural Resource Agent here. Some of my functions are uh, some of the things that I work on our Master Gardeners, West Georgia Green Association, uh, work with uh, local gardeners, garden mentors, growing families, that sort of thing. Awesome, mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, our local garden that used to be something and it's transitioning into something else. That's what right. is it transitioning to? So we, we transi transitioned our um, garden that the Master Gardeners were working on and, and generating produce for local charities to rented space garden. So we're, we're opening it up for, for uh, individuals to learn how to garden themselves awesome. with the assistance of the Master Gardeners and the use of our tools, water, mm -hmm. and of course a great location with the soil. Um, is just is, it's been prepped over the years and is, is really good and that is right behind the uh, health center across from the library and the Selman uh, Selman uh, Road right, location. Right. Yeah right mm -hmm. down from Douglas County High yeah. School mm -hmm. and so it used to be something that Master Gardeners kind of had exclusive rights to and now it's moving more towards a community garden. Right some of those Master Gardeners are they're getting a little bit tired of working real hard and so right. we're trying to bring in and uh, share the knowledge that we have about gardening with the community and give people the opportunity to learn how to garden themselves mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, they might be in a situation where their yards are very shaded and don't mm -hmm. have that opportunity to garden so we have that but then you also have individuals who may um, have never gardened before. They right. don't know how, but they want they want to learn how to uh, grow hands their own on class peppers, tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, cabbage, uh, broccoli. Grow their so it's a hands on absolutely That's awesome. with the assistance of some very experienced people. Some of those folks that uh, we had about five individuals run in the garden, mm -hmm. and they would produce at that at that quarter acre uh, plot just right around a quarter acre. They would produce anywhere from about thirty five hundred to forty five hundred pounds of produce wow. that they would donate to local charities. So, so we got some experts so, so teaching these that. people how to, how to do gardening. There you and we're going to talk more about that in, in a little bit. Right now, we got to figure out what we're cooking today. Awesome. So mm -hmm. you know what we're cooking, right? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm up for a big surprise here. <laughs> this, awesome. The secret. Now, Kevin brought us some uh, fresh veggies, which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, will obviously be kind of the theme today. So we're going to see if we can incorporate some of this into our recipe today. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal to you our ingredients and give you a, an opportunity to try to figure out what we're cooking. Oh, okay. I like that. This? I'm ready for it. All right, here we go. There all they are. Right. Wow. Couple hints. Okay. It's all vegetarian. Okay. And there are two recipes. Hmm. See what you got. You got your mayonnaise and your mustard. Um. Perhaps a potato salad, maybe? Nailed it. Okay. So recipe one, okay. potato salad, nice. And let's see, uh, hmm. What do we have here? Now this next recipe is something I've never cooked before. I've heard about it. It Some, sounds a little strange. I think we're gonna go quiche. It's, it is a pie type thing. Okay. And it is, it's sort of uh, in that vein. Mm-hmm. These are the main ingredients. Oh, what a beautiful tomato, yeah. We're making a tomato pie. Oh, yes. Have you mm -hmm. ever had that before? I have, I have. I've yeah. never had it, so I'm pretty uh, excited about that. Mm -hmm. It's got some great ingredients, tomatoes, onions, cheese, a little bit of hot sauce. Mm, sounds good. And then we bake it. That is mm -hmm. gonna be great. So we got the tomato pie and our from scratch potato salad. Sounds great. Coming right up, we're gonna have that ready to prep. We're gonna start with the tomato pie because it takes a little bit longer. Sounds great. And then we'll talk about our community garden. We'll be right back. I don't know about you, but I think this is a pretty beautiful setup we got here. It is beautiful. We got fresh vegetables, all sorts. And that's what this is all about today. Uh, we're going to start with our tomato pie. 
Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is chop up some tomatoes. Sounds great. So the recipe says to use about three to four tomatoes and it'll wind up yielding about three cups once we chop everything up. Okay. We do have to drain as much juice as we can. That's what the recipe says. Ah, okay. So what do you think? Which tomatoes you wanna use? A little bit of everything? I think we, yes, definitely. Right. Variety is great. If you want to start with that one, it says okay. just to chop it in half. Okay. We definitely don't want stickers or anything like that on it. All right. I'm going to cut the uh, stem out. Okay. And we've got a colander here. It says to cut it in half and squeeze. Try to get as much juice out as you can. Okay. And then we can chop them up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna make a big mess. <laughs> okay. We can make some tomato juice too. See, this is why I gave us towels. I gotcha, good idea. Get nice and messy. We're starting off with a, a couple decent sized tomatoes. So we can kind of play it by ear and figure out how much how many tomatoes we want to chop up. I definitely want to use some of these cherry tomatoes because they're very sweet. Mm -hmm. I think that'll add a, a mm -hmm. good contrast to the onion and the, the more tart tomatoes. Get these nice and chopped up. All right, there's half of one. working hard over here. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a pretty color too with that orange. Mm-hmm. Yes, it will. So you do a lot of cooking at home? I do, I enjoy cooking. I, I enjoy uh, the creativity that it, it, it comes with cooking. Sometimes I go off the sheet, off the recipe yeah, every once you know, in a while. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, that I is, like the creative. You know, that is. I'll that. start out with a recipe, work with it for a little bit, and then and do my little touch, add my little piece to it. We're in pretty good shape here. Yes, so we're gonna add these to the colander. You want mine in there as well? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, let's say we do these cherry tomatoes. And I think that's gonna be enough tomatoes for us. Let's take that one out. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. Here's you some to chop up. Okay. And I'll do these. Now these cherry tomatoes came right out of my garden. Awesome. So we got some good stuff going in this pie. Mm-hmm. I think in America we we uh, we hear the word pie, and we automatically think sweet. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of other countries, it's not that way. You've got savory pies, meat pies, meat. Yes, a lot of meat pies around there. I had a meat pie at Mercedes Benz Stadium a little while back while I was watching the soccer game. Awesome. That's the way they do it. That's Customary over in England. Mm. I have a meat pie at the game. At oh, the is that right? Game, yeah. Awesome. That'll hold you. The over. way they do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, do you want to chop up the basil or the onion? Either one. Which I'll, I'll take. I'll, I'll give take. you the basil. We want to do about eight big leaves. Of okay. The basil. All right. And with the onion, it says use about a third of an onion. So. I'm gonna go mm. ahead and chop half. Well, this basil smells great. Yes, and that actually came out of the garden too. There's so four, that is five. Very fresh. It was harvested this morning. Six, seven, and that's kind of small, so I'll throw those in there. And this kind of pie, excuse me, this kind of pie mm -hmm. is not like a regular, you know, flour and sugar and, you know, that kind of stuff. So with, when you're doing that kind of stuff, when you're baking, mm -hmm. you have to be pretty precise with your recipes. Because if you use a little too much of this, not enough of that, it can make a big difference. 
with this kind of cooking, it's not necessarily that way. You can you can take away and add and that's a, that's a good thing because I'm, I'm not known for my baking. I'm, I, I'm known <laughs> as the soup maker, but not yes, the baker. Yes. Um, I ad lib a little bit here and there. Yep. I and have more uh, of a sometimes soup gets style. me in a little bit of a tr a little bit of a jam <laughs> yeah. there. Um, but that's how you come up with the good recipes, you know. Oh yeah. It's all about experimentation. You want me to put this in the? Uh, leave it right there for oh, just okay. this this okay. moment because we're going to be layering everything. Oh, okay, great. Our pie crust is actually pre-baking and has a couple more minutes. Now, with the stuff that you brought, I say yeah. we add a layer of something that you brought. What do you want to add? It's up to you. I have uh, banana peppers, jalapeno peppers, uh, green peppers. That is. That is a banana pepper that is beginning to change colors and we can contrast that. Excuse me, if I reach across you here, I want to show a contrast. Oh yeah. This is what normally one would see as a banana pepper, but this left on the uh, bush there, it'll actually develop a color and this is getting kind of a rusty orange color. So either one of those would be great. I'm yeah. gonna do this one. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna do this one so it'll contrast with the, oh, the sure. colors of the, of the tomato. Mm -hmm. Um, and while I cut this up, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit more about the the garden that's transitioning right now so that sure. people can actually rent space and how sure. does that all work? Well, uh, those that are interested in learning to garden or those that have a limited space at their homes to garden are welcome to join your UGA Extension, Douglas County, uh, to uh, and the Master Gardeners at a garden that's located behind the health center and uh, adjacent to the library over by the uh, high school. Um, we rent out the space this year, a uh, dollar a linear foot. Next year, 2020, it'll be $2 a linear foot, minimum of 10 linear foot. So individual can actually rent space, a 35 square foot area for $10 for the remainder of this year. That's awesome. Next year, it'll be $20. And of course, we, we, um, they can rent all the way up to 52 linear feet. The neat thing about this is the master gardeners are there. Oh, we got a timer going. Yeah, I'm gonna pull okay. that pie crust out. The neat thing is the master gardeners are there to actually help help uh, new gardeners and to assist those that need need help in, in uh, the gardening experience. They also have uh, tools available. Uh, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, they're there from nine to 11 and uh, can assist them with the tools, assist them with their experience. We have water. The land has been worked for quite some, uh, at least over 20 plus years. And so the soil is really uh, ideal for growing uh, vegetables. And they're, they're, it's all about the harvest. Right. Getting fresh vegetables, the experience of, of working together with other gardeners, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, networking that goes on and the passion that's shared amongst gardeners. Oh, yeah. And just like cooking, the passion that's shared and what we're doing this morning is sharing. So There's one thing to go to the store and buy your groceries and come home and cook. It's a completely different thing to pull vegetables and fruits that you have actually grown it's and awesome. cooking with those. It mm -hmm. is just night and day. And the exercise that you get in the garden is yeah. fantastic. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, get out there and work a little bit. Yeah. You'll feel a little sore after you get done uh, yeah, working yeah, the garden. You'll sweat a little bit here in Georgia. Yeah, just a tad, <laughs> just a tad. But well worth it. Look oh, at the yeah. fresh. This has yeah. just been harvested. This small basket of vegetables there were harvested this morning. Wow. A uh, small garden, uh, mm -hmm. a pepper plant. You can get uh, shoot, 20 peppers off a pepper plant. I know the mm -hmm. uh, banana peppers produce very, very well, jalapenos, and so there's a lot of opportunity. Last year, I had one cucumber plant, mm -hmm. and I harvested over 60 cucumbers off that plant. Whoa. Very impressive. This year, I have, uh, as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, the watermelons. Mm -hmm. Some very nice, over, over, uh, oversized basketball-shaped watermelons. Mm -hmm. What a great delight. It's, That's uh, awesome. It's, it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to pull the yeah. cheese out of here. We've got okay. the, uh, I put it in the freezer so it would harden a little bit so mm -hmm. we can grate it. Um, and we can grate it right into here. I'll get you started on the mozzarella. Okay. And just use this side. Okay. We're gonna do about a cup, and then we're gonna do about a cup of this. Okay. Uh, I added a couple minutes on our pie crust, and it is finishing up right now. Okay. I'm gonna leave the oven on at 400. That's what we're gonna cook at. 
I will open up. I've got Monterey Jack and then you've got mozzarella right there. Again, we're going to do about a cup of each of these. Then we're going to be adding mayonnaise, a little bit of hot sauce, and some fresh ground pepper. Ooh, wow, that sounds great. I love cheese. Yeah, just get your attention, that's for sure. Yeah, I started, uh, I had a garden a couple years ago, but it was very small. Didn't get a whole lot out of it. Um, and then I, I, last year, I decided, all right, I'm gonna do it right. I'll put it in a better spot. Mm -hmm. But it was in the backyard where my dogs are. So I didn't want the dogs running through. So mm -hmm. last year was focused on building a fence, getting the ground ready. Uh, and then this year I actually got to plant some stuff. Awesome. I did sugar snap peas, uh, green beans, squash, corn, carrots, and tomatoes. Wow, you're a pretty productive the, guy. Yeah, the, the tomatoes have done very, very well. Still waiting for the squash. It, I mean, the, the plants look amazing. Corn didn't do so well. Uh, sugar snap peas started to do well, and then I don't know what happened to those. And then the green beans did fantastic. That's awesome, that's awesome. So picking a good site is really important. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that a lot of folks uh, overlook is the soil, improving yeah. the soil. And that's why I'm, I'm so uh, big on composting. Mm -hmm. And my garden has actually started as a compost pile that eventually generated right. into uh, the ideal soil. Mm -hmm. And uh, full sun, close to water, mm -hmm. compost, develop that soil, Key you're gonna get great, right great results. And that's the neat thing about this community garden that. Uh, uh, the rented space garden that we had mentioned earlier, is that that soil is ideal right now. Somebody can rent space and put plants in the ground today mm -hmm. for a fall garden and, and generate some great, great uh, produce such mm -hmm. as collard greens, kale, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, a uh, lot of opportunity. And there's still time to put in some green beans and some other, some yeah. other uh, plants that would be ideal. Well, you haven't family. mentioned anything that I don't like, so. You think that's about that a That looks great. And I'll, I'll do share that the rest. With you. <laughs> the Monterey Jack. I kind of got into gardening a little bit on uh, accident as well. Started the compost pile and then thought I'd put in a couple, one or two pepper plants and a few tomatoes. And the results were so great that uh, it, 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 it forced me to expand the garden a little bit. And of course, I really enjoyed the family time, getting the family out there working yeah. working together. And uh, my daughter Rose and Claire helped out. And of course, as I mentioned earlier in conversation, that they were both uh, part of the Junior Master Gardener program mm -hmm. uh, back in 20, uh, what was it, 2011, mm -hmm. 2011. And so uh, getting having them uh, uh, get out there and work with me a little bit. And then of course, enjoying the harvest is a lot of fun. Um, is neat to see. So, what can I do for you? We're gonna add a little bit of, I'm gonna let you stir things up. You got a compost up. bowl going right here, aren't we? Yes, yeah. we sure do. Get a little compost bowl. And, mm -hmm. and actually, I got this. Ah, I have the I very same Father's Father's unit Day. there. Boom. Awesome. It just sits on the counter, you know, and you put your compost in there, it fills up pretty quickly. These are great. Yeah, those are great. fantastic. Yes. It's got a little filter up top mm -hmm. so you don't smell anything. Yeah. You can buy bags for it too that mm -hmm. uh, are biodegradable. But for me, they kind of fell apart, so I, I have the using very those. same compost uh, canister, and and you know, at at first, it's a little hard to get folks to to uh, put their fruit and vegetable scraps and the different things that we compost into the canister. But as time goes on, and they see the benefits of of um, composting that uh, yeah. we start to get th the habits developed and we keep it on our counter as well and of course I take it out just like I would uh, the trash uh, on, a, on yep. a daily basis. I make the kids and, do it. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the kid's job. So, but but wow, what a difference it can make in your soil, and and yeah. uh, whether you're uh, vegetable gardening or even even uh, using the compost in your landscape, it's ideal mm -hmm. with flowers and and uh, of course you can you can add leaves and sticks, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of neat things, and we could talk about compost. And, yeah, that could be a whole uh, nother whole show. nother show. And yeah. it adds up quick. It does. You know, once you start collecting it, you, you think, oh, this is just a little bit of stuff, but it, it adds up quick. The other neat thing about composting is it reduces your waste mm -hmm. that goes off to landfill that's transported to landfill. And of course, you know, we have limited space here in Douglas County yes. for, for our 
for our waste, and so uh, it actually helps out and, and improves the soil at your home, whether you're using it in the garden or, or in the landscapes. So right. Good stuff. Well, that looks great. All right, so we got our cheese mixture. Mm -hmm. We've got our other ingredients. We got the onion. We got our uh, banana pepper that mm -hmm. we're going to add. Mm -hmm. Of course, we got the tomatoes and we've got the basil. So what we're gonna do now is bring our pie crust over, get some of this out of the way, mm -hmm. and we're gonna start filling it up. All right. First layer. Boy, that looks great. Is we can give onions. you a little bit of room here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say to layer this out, so. Okay. And also, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Oh, to that'll our bring it out a little tomatoes. bit. Mm -hmm and stir those up. If you want to stir those up a little sure. bit and kind of work the moisture out okay. a little bit. As much moisture as we okay. can get out, the better. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those colors. That's awesome. Yeah. All fresh tomatoes. I'm gonna to add the onions to the bottom layer here. This is about a third of a cup. This was a pretty small onion, so I was able to use whole half. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add our banana peppers to the next layer, which isn't in the recipe, but you know what? We're going rogue. Sounds good. Creativity. That's right. Keeps us going. More micronutrients. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're good here. Awesome. Now it says you can use a uh, paper towel. Get a little more of the moisture out of the tomatoes. tomatoes. There you go. So I'm just gonna press down on those a little bit. Mm hmm. Awesome. Put that to the side and get rid of that in a moment. And then if you will do the honors, I'll let you put the next layer on, which is the tomatoes. Are we using it all or? or? We'll just kind of play it by ear. Oh, okay. We, we may right. wind up using it all. Okay. I think we probably can. Oh, that is so pretty. It is. And you said you've had this before. So well, I've had, I've had, I've had version. tomato a version now. That, like so many, there's so many different yeah. types of recipes out yep. there. I'm sure. But this looks great. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. What a creative way to use your tomatoes. Yeah, when you start producing a lot of tomatoes in the garden, you start looking for ways to use them. Because <laughs> they start adding up a lot. Bring them to work, hand them out to people, can them, make marinara. You do make a lot of friends sharing your yes, produce. Yes, yes, you? you do, you yeah. do. All yeah. right, and next layer will be the basil. You okay. can sprinkle that over the top. Okay. Let's see here. Oh. Yes. This is almost like a caprese salad. Mm, it smells Tomatoes, great. Basil that and cheese. That basil really brings out the scent. Yeah. Yep. The smell looks. If you really good. wanted to do it like a caprese, you could uh, just use mozzarella, and then maybe top the whole thing with a little balsamic glaze. Ooh. Mm hmm. That would be fantastic. All right, I think we're in good shape there. The last layer. It's pretty. Maybe the best layer is our cheese. So we're gonna press that down. What were the two cheeses? We had mozzarella and this one was? Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack, all right. Awesome. All right, let's get that pressed out. It's like painting. Mm -hmm. I need to use more or less cheese. This uh, this will go in here for, I think I saw 25 minutes at 400. So the cheese will be pretty melted and spread out, nice and gooey and bubbly. Mm-hmm, looks good. That looks great. All right, so yes, anywhere, it says anywhere between 25 and 45 minutes. That's pretty wide range. We're going to start with 25. Sounds I think good. it's going to be ready after 25. Mm -hmm. All right, now I just have to find my uh, my oven mitts. There we go. If you will open the oven for me, I'll sure. slide this in. All righty. And set the timer. 25 
125 at 400. We're gonna let that go, clean up a little bit. We're gonna get our uh, potato salad prepped and ready to roll. And we'll talk a little bit more about this garden and how you can actually get your plot. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll be right back. Alrighty. You can tell the uh, potatoes are hot. They're hot. They, they look just, great. Just came out of the out of the water. They're nice and uh, still a little bit firm, mm -hmm. which is what you want with potato salad. What I like is I like to use the, the masher just to get some of it a mm -hmm. little mushy, which mm -hmm. I don't like using that word, but you want a, a little bit of softness and then you want a little, you know, some of the, the chunks to be in there. That's the way Holds I like it. Holds it all together. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Gives so. That great flavor. Probably the hardest part of doing uh, a good potato salad is peeling the eggs. And uh, so we got to get to work on that right now. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Whoop. I'll add this over here. Okay. We'll just do a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to start cutting up the onion. Okay. Uh, and rinse this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. And what I'll do is give you the recipe for the other things that are going to get added. Okay. We're going to do. Now the recipe calls for a cup of mayonnaise and a half a cup of mustard. Okay. Now, when I did mine, I like a nice mustard-based okay. uh, potato salad. So what I did was I did equal parts. So Okay, so you want a cup of may mayo yes. and a cup of mustard. Yes, sir. All right, we can do that. Let me rinse this off real quick. All right, let's see what we can do here. I prefer pur purple onion in my uh, potato salad. I'm gonna do mustard first. I've got more mustard if that's not enough. Okay. So if people want to get in the beautiful uh, colors there. Involved with this garden, what do they need to do? Well, they they want to drop by the extension office there on Fairburn Road, sixty two seventy nine Fairburn Road. Okay. And we'll get them set up. There's uh, they want to pick out their plot, and we have a plot plan that they could look at, or they can go by the garden and look at the, the various uh, uh, rows that are labeled. Come back with a number that that's available, and uh, then we'll we'll get them a, an agreement to look over. Make sure they understand the rules and policies of the garden, because mm -hmm. when you bring large groups of people together or groups of people together, everybody has to understand how how the uh, garden operates, so that we avoid issues. Working together, working together as a team, and so there's a garden agreement, and then uh, you'll pay make your payment there at the extension office. And of course, as we had mentioned earlier, it was it's a dollar a linear foot. Minim, minimum is. 10 linear foot, maximum is 52 linear feet. And then next year for 2020, it'll go up to $2. And that that's where we uh, hope to stay. Uh, and th those funds that are generated actually help with the uh, some of the expenses that go with the garden. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, go ahead and is, are you okay with yep. that or I need yep. a little more? No, okay, that's perfect. good. Do we have a... And then the same amount may, of... May I use? This, we'll use this one. That okay. one's much easier to use. Oh, okay, good, very good. We'll use this one to stir. Okay. So there's your cup of mustard in there, just shy yeah. of a cup of mustard. About the same okay. amount of mayo. Okay. All right. Now the purple see. onion, I uh, I like to have it in pieces about like this. Some mm -hmm. uh, the largest. I wouldn't do it any larger okay. than that. Uh, but what I like about it is um, you've got you know the firm potatoes. Textures. And yeah. then you got the crunchy mm -hmm. of the onion. It just all works together perfectly. Brings, it brings it all together. I yes. love it. Let me rinse this off and I'll get that mayonnaise going there. All right, let's see. I'm not sure the best way. You got a big spoon maybe? Maybe I should, oh, maybe I should maybe use that. Know. That might fit yeah, here. Not, let me get another this, this, Nope, that won't fit. <laughs> Awesome, go. thank you. 
All right, and we're also gonna be adding some uh, relish. You can buy dill pickles and cut them up, but this is just a little bit easier. And I'm gonna do four big scoops, which is gonna wind up being this whole thing, and I'm gonna add the liquid to it as well. I do have another jar of it. I think I might need a little bit more. So I'm gonna add that. This is family reunion size right here. Oh, We're gonna man, have a lot of taste out. This will last us a while. We need this cup again, or are we done with it? I don't think so. Okay, I'm gonna set it, it over here. Now comes the seasonings. We're gonna add a little bit of paprika. Oh, wow. Or a brings out amount, because we have a lot of ingredients here. Brings out the colors, doesn't it? Yes. The purple, the orange, that's, the bright yellow. You know, that's, you know, what it, what it looks like when you do deviled eggs, so. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a little bit of garlic powder. This here. Not garlic salt, but just garlic powder. Ooh, that'll bring it out, won't it? Yep. You know, garlic, they plant garlic around here in November. So those folks that are interested in growing their own garlic, November's a great time. They harvest it uh, in May. Also onions, we can plant onions in the fall. Uh -huh. It's an ideal time. Yeah, so those now's, are all neat Now's things. the time to start thinking about that stuff. Sure is. All right, so I'm gonna mash this a little bit just to get mm -hmm. it incorporated and then we can stir it up. And I can feel the textures in there. Wow, it looks great. It smells good too. It does smell good. Oops. Oops. I got, I got that here. I call it. It's mine. <laughs> oh, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you like to garden? I have found that I really do like gardening. Yeah. How did you get started in it? Uh, my parents always had a garden, mm -hmm. um, and I hated it. Yeah. Because my job was to weed the garden. Mine, mine as well. Mine as well. We used to have uh, dirt clod fights in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were supposed to be out there weeding, and of course we had a lot of fun in the garden. And of course, as a young person, you you weren't real enthused about having to pull weeds. But yep. as an adult and uh, growing a garden and re realizing the benefits of a garden, you, uh, yeah. you tend it doesn't bother you as much. When you get your good, own good yard, exercise when too. you get your own yard and you start eating your own food and preparing it, it it's mm -hmm. a whole different experience. It um, is. And it, it's just been a great hobby. It it's is. good exercise. Excellent um, exercise. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's re rewarding, I mm -hmm. guess would be the best. And you never know it. the outcome. Yeah. You know, there's, there's peaks and valleys. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not so good, and, and yeah. you have to adjust and have the learning experience is ongoing because there's all kinds of different, different vegetables that you can plant, all kinds of different issues that may come up that you have to remedy. And of course, we don't always like all the issues, but we it does make life interesting. And so. it does make the successes even more. Even grander. Even better. That's true, yeah. yeah. And sharing the experience, just like some other hobbies, like fishing and hunting mm -hmm. and, and oh, some yeah. of the uh, sports that are out there, it's, it's, it's a great uh, thing to share with others. It is, it is. Mm -hmm. So we've got our recipes finished. We've got our potato salad. We've already pulled out the tomato pie. It looks fantastic. It does. We're gonna clean up when we come back. We get to taste it. Man, that sounds great. I can't wait. The tomato pie looks fantastic in the pie bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say runny, but it's just not set. And we think that it's because we didn't get enough of the moisture out of the tomatoes. More squeeze. Right, more squeeze. More squeeze. We need more squeeze. And, and maybe tomatoes. what we could do is cut up the tomatoes and then get as much moisture out as we can and then let them sit for a little I bit longer. I think so too. Maybe yeah. even out on the porch. Mm -hmm. I've got a covered porch so mm -hmm. bugs won't get to it. Um, but otherwise, it looks great. It smells great. It looks great. great. I'm sure it's going to taste great. Yeah. And, and you got the, the right, right ingredients in. The uh, potato salad looks and smells great as well. What do you mm -hmm. want to start with? Your choice. Tomato pie. Let's go for it. All right. I'll make sure I get some of that tomato. Some of the crust in there. Yes. Oh, nice colors. Orange, red, greens. Mmm, 
that is pretty dang tasty. That's good. Very good. Oh my gosh. That is worth, worth the effort. I normally don't take two bites when we're just tasting, but I have to. Watch out, watch out. Wow, those tomatoes taste great. Mm -hmm. And the cheese really brings it out. Very, very good. Very good. Hard to say, uh, hard to slow down, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will be making that again. I think I'm going to give it a try. That is really good. Yeah, that was worthwhile. All right, let's go for this uh, potato, potato salad. salad. All right. This is your modification, it's right? my mod, yeah. yeah. Tastes like the last time I made it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Got a little zing in it. Yeah. With the uh, with the um, mustard. A little more mustard, yeah. It gets yeah, I like a little, that. A little more tang to it. You can put a few small pieces of jalapeno in there, there to really give go. it a little zing if you want to spice it up a little bit. But we were told not to use the jalapeno in this. Oh, by, why? By one of our camera people. Oh, <laughs> sensitive uh, mm -hmm. taste buds, huh? A little the, the, the spice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do a great job, so you know we gotta feed them when they're done. Gotta take care of them. Yep. You gotta make good food. But you, yeah, but get you some um, some of the red, mm -hmm. some of the uh, yep. red peppers make in there, it, bring it some even. really color. Yep, exactly. Because mm -hmm. some very you know, well food done. T can taste good, but it tastes even better when it looks good. Presentation is a good part. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and once again, tell us uh, how people can uh, find out more information about the community garden and how they can buy in. Well, just come by the Extension office and we'd be more than happy to share um, the experience, what, what we have to offer. We have all kinds of different opportunities there at the Extension office to share about gardening, but they can come by there and talk to us or they can go by the garden themselves. And usually on Monday mornings from 9 to 11, we have master gardeners there that are okay. willing to, to talk with them and uh, share what they have to offer. Uh, great, great opportunity. I would love to see some of the clubs. I know the 4-H uh, several of the 4-H clubs have taken on uh, mm. gardens and um, the master gardeners that are volunteering to help, we give them a little garden space to work while they're there. Mm -hmm. So you get to see their efforts and, and there's, they still have a few of the plots that are used for generating produce that they give to the local charity. So, right. so they can, uh, other garden, gardeners that want to get involved can actually see what other gardeners are doing mm -hmm. and share that experience. Get you may get inspired. Could be inspired. You could be, one individual could be planting tomatoes and peppers over here and we might have somebody over here doing uh, broccoli and uh, collards and uh, different plant material. Uh, Brussels mm -hmm. sprouts was mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cauliflower. There's a lot of neat things. You may not know how to grow that. Right. There's others that might be there that could help you out. And then of course dealing with the various pests and mm -hmm. uh, there's people that can help you with that. But right. come by the extension office. Love to have you speak to some of the master gardeners if you're out and about and you bump into them. Uh, but the, when you get ready to sign up, the extension office is where you want to go. Perfect. And we'll get you all fixed up. And we have a plot plan there that we can figure out what, mm -hmm. which plot you have. And of course, the other thing about that is the gardener, if they invest in a particular area, that plot is theirs until they decide that they don't no okay. longer want to rent that spot. So they can keep and it going the next they year. They can keep it going if they do uh, soil amendments and develop that soil for mm -hmm. the particular crop that they're trying to grow. They can ma hold on to that and maintain that space until they decide they're they're uh, done with it and want okay. to pass it on to someone else. Um, those individuals that, you know, just want to learn. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity. way to learn how to garden. You can learn from professionals and you get to use soil that's already ready. It's already in the right place. It's a proven garden. It's produced, you know, thousands of pounds of produce. So mm -hmm. this is probably the best way to learn. You can learn from other people's experiences so you don't make the same mistakes. They've already made them. They can tell you how to avoid them. That, that's so true. The networking there is fantastic. These mm -hmm. people are great. There's uh, several individuals there that have their own personal gardens that do that um, it's just wonderful and they and they share the produce with each other it's good good community of folks right and it's a great place to meet people get plugged in with your community and that's what this show is all about getting involved in your local community kevin thank you so much for being on the show thank you for the yes, help sir. oh man i i enjoy cooking i enjoy the harvest um it makes it yeah a lot easier great. having people on who know how to cook and, and know food so i appreciate that and we will see you next month on Servings Kitchen with a Cause.
Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Let's eat. Yeah, sounds <laughs> great.